Thanks, Lisa, for your patience. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome. So, yeah, so tonight we have two speakers. We have Cert from the UK and Jesse B from Arizona, I believe, uh, from the US at least. Um, and so we're so pleased, they, pleased they're here. So please give a warm Arizona welcome to them. Um, from, they're going to be sharing their experience, strength and hope on step four. Um, we hope this inspires you with your own step fours. Um, I'm aware that step four is often the step four just as and step nine. They're the places in the um, 12 steps when people have the highest tendency to uh, not do them basically to, 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 you know, to show up, to, to not show up, to leave there um, because they're the, they're, the, they're the places that require, require and that extra muscle from us, that extra strength from us. So it'd be great to get some insight tonight into how uh, these fellows have navigated these waters um, so that it can help us. And I'm, I'm on my code of step four at the moment, step four, step five. So I'm really grateful for the insight. Great. So, um, sir, are you ready to share? How would you like your time? Richard is the timekeeper. Uh, sorry, how else are we doing 20 minutes? Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Can I have um, 10 and then 15, please, Richard? So, and then, and then, sorry, 10, 15, and 20, please. Oh, so you'd like to be alerted at 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And at Actually. the end. And at the end, yes, please. Okay. Thank Thanks you. so much. And just to say, just to let people know the format of tonight's meeting, um, so Cert's going to share, then we'll have shares back, then we're going to have a break, um, then Jesse B will share, then we'll share back. So yeah, just so you just say you have a sense of the overview of how it's going to go. Um, so there'll be plenty of time for sharing back. Great. Thanks so much, sir. Over to you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Sir. I'm codependent. Um, it's a real privilege and honour to um, spend this time with you guys tonight and to uh, share my experience um, on step four. So thank you, first and foremost, um, for, for this opportunity. Um, yeah, step four, it's, it's a big one. Um, made a searching and fearless moral in inventory of ourselves. Um, it, it took me a while to get to this step um, in my recovery. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start with a bit of, of background. Um, I, I came to codependency, to the program, after, a, you know, an, the end of another relationship and I'd been monkey barring from relationship to relationship and, you know, the same problems and the same situations and the same dialogues just showing up in relationships, you know, the same script and a different person, um, literally verbatim sometimes, um, you know, the, the, the things that I would hear from uh, from my partners. Um, and then, and then um, at, at a certain point down the line, uh, one partner in particular mentioned the program of codependency and, and they asked me if, if, I, if I thought I might be codependent. And um, I'd heard of the term codependency before. And I'd even read a few books. I'd read a few sort of like self-help books on, on codependency. And I'd come to the conclusion that I wasn't codependent. Having read these books, um, you know, and, and that was that was maybe a few years before finding myself in this in this situation where I was where a partner was asking me if I was codependent. And I was like, no, I've read the books. I've done the analysis. That's not me. I'm not codependent. Thank you very much. There's nothing else to see here. Um, and but then, the, as I say, the same dynamics were playing out. The same, the same script, verbatim, word for word. And so I, there came a point when I went onto the to the UK codependent website and I looked at the patterns and characteristics and I checked each one off and I was like yes 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 that's me that's me that's me I do that I do that I do that I do that so lo and behold uh, <laughs> I realized I was codependent and that I needed the program of codependence anonymous so um, that was how I came in 
in, into the program. And, and I came in, you know, dragging my heels, really. I didn't, I didn't want to be there. And I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't, I really struggled, to be honest, I really struggled with the concept of a higher power. So whilst I, I was a long time having got into the program to really, really work it authentically and to discover a connection to a higher power, you know, for a long time, I thought, oh, I can just do this. I can be in the program and I can work this program and I'll just leave the higher power part of it to one side I just won't I won't really engage with that so much so that I got to I got a sponsor I was very lucky uh, in this program um you know I know that my experience uh, from what I've seen uh, in this program is is it can be it can be difficult to find sponsorship uh, but I was very lucky and I found a I found a great sponsor very early on and uh and he saw straight through me he saw straight through me with regards to what was going on with the higher power you know he, he you know he's very experienced and he could see what I was trying to do and we had an earnest and sincere conversation and you know he said to me you know it's not going to work sir if you don't you know higher power is part of it and having a person reflect that back to me who was 100% interested and genuinely concerned about my well-being made me sit up and take stock and think okay this this guy this guy's invested in me and so I owe it to him to pursue this sincerely so I did so I did and it and it took me months it took me months to work through step one two and three it wasn't any it wasn't an easy nor was it a fast process for me but I got there I got there and I did it I did it earnestly. I did it sincerely, and I managed to get a connection to a higher power. So that by the time I came to step four, you know, there was there was some grounding. The 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 roots were were laid, and, and you know, I had a sense of anchoring in this program. But in all honesty, I wasn't prepared for what step four was was about or what it was going to bring up for me you know um to have to look at things in such in such a, a an in-depth and honest way you know I'd never done anything like that in my life I'd been I had been in therapy for a, for a few years but but the type of therapy that I was in you I there was no comparison between that and working an honest step four you know by far it it was it was one of the, the, the was that time sorry no sorry it was somebody who was unmuted no. sorry um uh, it was by far one of the most difficult things I've ever done. And at the same time, one of the most rewarding things that I have ever done to have to sort of dissect forensically, you know, uh, at look at my past and my relationships and my behaviours and really break it down and use and and you know i i used the patterns and characteristics so in the code of green book you know there are suggested ways of doing it um and they are just that they're suggested and you know and i have i had a really i have a really lovely encouraging gentle sponsor and you know he said to me sir there's no right way there's only your way and our way there's our way that we decide to do this together you know so first and foremost that made me feel comfortable it made me feel it made me feel relaxed because of course immediately the codependent perfectionist in me wanted to do step four perfectly you know I wanted to get my head down and put pen to paper and do it 
impeccably as though there was this perfect way of doing it and nobody else had realized it but me you know I was just there to come and do this step four perfectly and you know it was my as I say it was my 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 sponsor very gently telling me so there is no right way there's your way there's our way we'll do this together and that was a huge relief because you know that that took away the perfectionism out of it and we worked out you know a format and a structure that was going to work for me. Uh, and that was the first step. And then, you know, so the, 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 seed, the seed was sown and, and I began the process of really looking at, um, looking at, looking at my behavior, looking at my patterns, you know, facing them. And uh, for many years, you know, for up until that point, I'd been hiding. I'd been hiding from my codependent behaviors. I'd been hiding behind a lot of blame, a lot of shame, a lot of victimhood at that point. You know, I was convinced by that point that, you know, it was always the other person. It was always, the, you know, the person that I was in relationship, be that mom, dad, brother, you know, partners bosses and friends you know that you know I, I I was quite comfortable in being a victim in feeling like I'd been victimized by other people and and I thought up until that point that's what you know that's what the program was about it was about appeasing that victimhood but then you know the real honest look like I say under the microscope at my own patterns and behaviors and my own dysfunction you know in relationship um there was no hiding you know because I only had myself I had myself to face um and you know working a, an honest step four means there's no hiding there's no hiding there's no blaming there's no shaming and in that is a huge sense of liberation or was a huge sense of liberation. I didn't necessarily realize that at the time though, you know, it was very difficult. It was very sticky. It was very muddy for me to work through that process. And I, I you know, my process was that I broke it down by age and I broke it down by people and then I broke it down by situations and I'd you know I'd attribute the codependent uh, pa uh, um, patterns and characteristics and it was difficult I hated it I didn't like it I did not enjoy step four I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that it, you know my step four was it was a long drawn out slow arduous process you know and every and I'd constantly go back to my sponsor and say I'm not enjoying this I'm not you know I don't want to do this I, I think I've had enough this program's not for me and he would have this wry sage-like smile every time and he'd say sir everything you're feeling is exactly what you're supposed to be feeling you know this is not supposed to be easy you are on the right track and he had such faith in me he had such he gave me such support such strength you know it was really him you know that really helped me through that process you know and and it took me a long time you know my step four over over a year Absolutely. Um, you know, and I and I'm and I like to be honest about that process because you know, I think sometimes in recovery there is there is a there is sometimes a pressure to to get things done quickly as though there's gonna be this quick fix once you once you get it done, you know, you're gonna be enlightened and see the light and you're gonna be fixed. Or or I'm gonna be fixed, you know, and um you know that 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 wasn't that is that wasn't the case for me you know it's it's a very slow intricate deep profound process that that you that i had to be present in i had to feel the difficulty i had to switch on those the ability to feel because my codependency for such a long time meant that you know i had learned to survive you know, and survival for me meant not feeling, 
not tuning in, not making myself known or heard. You know, I came from a family where I was the youngest and there were, it was a very hierarchical system and I was the bottom of the hierarchy. You know, I wasn't allowed to feel. I wasn't allowed to show emotion. I wasn't allowed to express myself. I wasn't allowed to tune in. What I had to do was stay out of the firing line in a very dysfunctional, in a very, very dysfunctional environment. And I'd, I'd carried that into my step four. And, you know, it was it was through my sponsor's, you know, love and support that I realized it didn't need to be like that, that I could face this, uh, face this process and, and I would be OK. And that and that even even if I found it difficult. You know, I'd survive it. It wasn't going to kill me. It wasn't going to get the better of me. And so it took me a while to realize that. And so I'd have to come back to the process, you know, and and the actual process of writing it was that I, I could I could do five minutes, 10 minutes, and then it would be too much. And I'd have to close the book and leave it and go away. And that well, that was part of the reason why it took so long. And so, you know, I remember sharing that with my sponsor and I remember him saying to me, you know, bring your higher power into the process, sir. bring your higher power into step four. So I, you know, started to, you know, I started a, a ritual almost, you know, when I'd open up my green book and I'd open up my notebook, I'd light a candle, I'd say the serenity prayer at the beginning, you know, bring my higher power into the process, uh, into the experience you know, and just keeping my higher power there with me as I put pen to paper. And it was really difficult having to face my stuff without pointing the finger at anybody, without blaming anybody, really saying, you know, sir, in that situation, you know, you were wrong. You were codependent. This is how your codependency shows up. And then and then putting an end to the ritual as well and saying, OK, that's enough five minutes down the line or 10 minutes off the writing, closing the notebook, blowing out the candle, saying a prayer to my higher power and, you know, just uh, turning it in, turning the process into a ritual made it much more um, manageable for me, you know, to the point that I began to see the value in what I was doing because for a long time I couldn't see the value because it was so painful because it brought up so many you know uncomfortable feelings you know dis-ease you know this this thing called codependency is often referred to as a disease and, and what is the etymology of that what is uh, of that word dis disease is dis-ease and that's exactly what I felt when I was doing my step four for the for the majority of the time was a real strong sense of dis-ease it didn't didn't feel nice it didn't feel it didn't feel you know valuable like step one two and three did you know I felt like I was getting a benefit I felt like there was there was some value in connecting to a, to a higher power and creating that relationship that I'd never had I didn't see the value in step four. It just felt, it just felt horrible, you know, until I really started, as I say, turning it into a ritual and applying myself and sharing, also sharing about the experience, you know, going to codependency meetings and talking about how difficult I found it, you know, and taking the shame away from that and taking the embarrassment away from that. Um, you know, and that's the beauty of this program. You know, it, 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 there is the, the beauty is in the design. It's there, and um, the more I shared about the difficulty, the more I spoke to my sponsor, the more I shared it with fellows, and the more I listened. You know, when I was in a in a meeting and a step forward come up, and other people will talk about how difficult it was, I realized, oh yeah, of course, other people find this difficult. It's not just me. You know, I'm not special. I'm not. You know, I'm not unique. Uh, and again, it's in the design. There's something in the design of these steps and how each one 
you know, plays out. And, and unfortunately, you know, step, unfortunately, but also fortunately, step four is, is the first real, you know, intense step that, that, that is difficult you know to get through but the the rewards really start to sort of um manifest quite quickly um so yeah um you know and i think it is it was important now in hindsight talking about now i think it's really important to acknowledge the importance of of being present um, to the process, you know, because it was difficult, I used to find it, you know, I used to want to avoid, I used to want to avoid step four. I, I you know, I used to avoid it like I owed it money. <laughs> um, but in hindsight, I think it's really important to, for, to be present, to be in the process, you know, and to be, comfortable with those uncomfortable feelings um you know um and and because that is for me where the recovery came it was learning to do things differently it was learning to unlearn a lot of my mechanics um a lot of my codependent mechanics that i you know, I'd learned to survive and that had, if I'm completely honest, you know, a lot of my mechanics, they they worked, they served me well, they kept me safe. You know, my codependent behavior had, was effective. It was effective behavior to a point, up to a point until it wasn't effective, until it, you know, until it showed up in every one of my romantic relationships in every one of my professional relationships you know and so it was this the, the step four was was really for me looking at the behavior and going okay this is codependent behavior these are codependent patterns and characteristics this is where they show up this is how they no longer serve me but this is also how they did serve me and I wrap up please Five minutes to wrap up. Uh, is that right? Is, shall we it's 15 minutes? 20 minutes, right? but I was just going to give you some time to wind down. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Um, yeah. Undoing, sorry, catch my thought. Undoing those codependent behaviors. And, and the, thing that, the thing that I want to really sort of like, for me, uh, my experience, strength, and hope of this program is the gentleness of it um everywhere every corner every experience that i had in a meeting with fellows on outreach calls with my sponsor you know going for a coffee afterwards there was always kindness love and gentleness and and i am now a sponsor and i sponsor people through this program and my one my one thing that I endorse as a sponsor that I took from this program is gentleness. This is this for me and particularly step four, actually for as difficult as I found it was a, a gentle process. It was a kind process. It didn't seem like it at the time, but this is the beauty of this program and that it's it, uh, uh, you know it really is a gentle it's in the design and it and it is a gentle process and you know there from step four a lot of the negative stuff came up but that is not an excuse to you know it wasn't an excuse for me to beat myself up or to go into more shame or more low self-esteem you know it was a way for me to work my way out of those codependent characteristics and 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 patterns and look for recovery and and recovery exists and today listen it's not perfect by any means you know i'm still a codependent person and i still have codependent characteristics and traits but it's very very different and my life and my relationships now are very very different to when i first came into this program and i absolutely you know put that down to this program and the steps um, 
life is is far more positive and yeah there's a lot more kindness and gentleness in my life in my relationships and to myself and to others so yeah i will leave it there thank you very much thank you so much for an inspiring share uh, I personally always appreciate hearing a male perspective and thank you for your willingness and your kindness, your gentleness and your humility. I sure. All right. Hey, everybody. My name is Jesse and I am codependent. Uh, Jackie, thanks so much for asking me to share. Uh, I like Sir, I too am, am sponsored in this program. My sponsor is here today. So. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm grateful to be here. Um, you know, it it's kind of funny. I um, I've been I was asked recently in my other in an, another program, and I'll talk about that for a minute to to share on on the fourth step. And I think that Cert did an amazing job because where I can kind of go with this sometimes is I want to start to teach people about the step, and I want to start laying out the you know the 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 mechanics of it. And really, what I've been asked to do is to share my experience strength and hope and that actually kind of takes the weight off a little bit because i don't have to teach anybody how to do this step right i just have to share my experience with it so um <clears throat> i came to codependence anonymous um actually so just to give a little background as well i i came through to codependence anonymous through another 12th step program um i had i had it had been suggested to me a few years back by my therapist that I go to Codependence Anonymous and I tried it. I don't mean to offend anybody. Again, this is just my experience. Um, I did try to go to CODA a year, a few years ago. Uh, I went, to, this was long before Zoom or coronavirus or any of that stuff. And um, I went to like maybe two in-person meetings and it what it seemed to me to be was a bunch of old ladies that were complaining about not being able to stop me be controlling their 30 year old son's lives and i was in my 30s and i was just like why don't you just leave them alone and then i was just like i don't think i have what you have and so i sought out another 12-step program um and uh I, I went to al anon for a while um, and th that was great. It was good. But, um, and, and then I actually ended up renting a room from my Al Anon sponsor, which now in retrospect was pretty codependent of me. And it just wasn't what, where I needed to be. And so, um, and then uh, about nine months ago, eight months ago, um, you know, so what happened was I, I, you know, I, you know, like it talks about in our preamble, um, that you know, I, I suffered from other powerful addictions um, that I used to treat my codependency, and I'm glad that I can talk about that in this program. Um, it talks a lot about it in the stories in our book. It talks about it in you know about recommending that I, I still maintain a another 12-step program for my substance abuse. Gives me permission to do that. Um, encourages it in, in our literature, and um, and I'm glad that I can talk freely about that because. It, you know, I used to think that that was my primary issue and that the codependency was kind of more of an underlying thing. And what I recognize today is that really when my codependent, the, my alcoholism was just a manifestation of my codependency and what it really, what that was, was really an inability to be able to be with myself. And um, I needed to escape that. Um, and I used alcohol and drugs and other people and, you know, anything and everything that I could to not be with myself. And so, you know, I, I spent eight years uh, in that and trying, trying to get clean and sober. And um, I'd spent eight years in my first year, I, I like to say in that other program. And finally, I, I started um, getting, I, I finally got into therapy. Um, and it was only once that happened that I was in, when I started addressing my codependency through therapy that I was actually able to start getting some, some recovery from, um, from drugs and alcohol. And then what happened was after a couple years of being clean and sober, um, 
in a, a lot of the gifts that are promised in that program started coming true in my life. And I traded them all in for a very toxic relationship. Um, and, you know, like my sponsor likes to say it was a shit show inside of a dumpster fire. Uh, you know, that's what it was. And, and, and I realized that if I was going to get any type of benefits or to be able to have a, a happy, um, fulfilling life in my sobriety, that I was going to have to deal with this codependency stuff. And so I reached out to a friend of mine who was in that, who was in AA as well, and who was also in CODA. Um, and he is sponsored by Gino as well. And he gave me Gino's phone number and I called Gino and I count that as my, my date. And, and when I started my recovery, um, I was actually probably a day before I actually attended my very first CODA meeting, um, outside of the, the, the few years before that. Um, and so, um, you know, when I had done many fourth steps, um, in my, in my other program. So I didn't, I'm, I, I didn't have a whole lot of, um, trepidation around doing the fourth step. Um, I do, you know, I, I, I do take some issue with the verbiage around um, the uh, searching and fearless moral inventory. I don't know anybody that's ever done a fearless moral in inventory. It, I just don't know that that actually exists. It's courageous, I'm, but there's always fear around it. There, the, the, you know, and so if you're waiting to, to, to be fearless, don't because I don't know anybody that's ever done a fearless inventory. There's fear around this stuff. I don't want to look at this stuff. Are you kidding me? Are you, have you looked at it? Like, I don't want to look at this stuff. You know, there, there's fear around it. I'm going to walk through that fear. And that's one of the things that I, that's one of the gifts of the program is that I get to learn how to walk through this stuff. I get to walk through the fear and that does require courage, but you know, I don't, I don't believe in doing a fearless inventory because I've never done one. Um, there's always been fear around it. And so, but, but there, you know, one issue that I did have with it is, um, you know, because I looked ahead, um, some to cheat, and um, I looked ahead in the book and I saw what was being asked of me. And um, I shared this the other night at the CODA meeting, but I, I'm just not a, I'm not a homework guy. Um, I know none of you other codependents are like that. You guys all love to journal and you guys like to write in inventory and like all of that stuff. I'm just not cut from that mold. Uh, I don't like to write. I don't like homework. I don't like studying, you know, just give me the test and, and we can do that. Right. Just give me the fifth step. Let's do that. I'll, let's talk about me. I love talking about me. It's actually my favorite subject. Like I can do that for hours. You know, let's just go talk about me. Why do we got to write stuff? That sounds like work. And, you know, and that's kind of like how I viewed it was it was like this homework step, much like I used to, to uh, look at the, the eighth step, right? Like the fourth and eighth step, like those are the homework steps. And I don't want to do that. It sounds a lot like work. It sounds like it's going to be time consuming. I don't like my handwriting, um, you know, all kinds of reasons why I don't like to do homework. But um, but what I can say is that, you know, I, I did recognize that from my other program that there's freedom in taking a look at myself and, you know, somebody had asked a question about when do you know when you're ready to do a fourth step? And it's like, for me, it's, it's the same way I knew that, that I was, it was time to go to CODA. When the, when the pain of staying the same is too great, right? When I'm tired, when I'm sick and tired of feeling the way that I'm feeling, I'm going to do something about it. And so when the pain is great enough, I will be willing to change. My, you know, my, my spiritual growth has always been at the rate of my pain. And so you know, if, if, if I'm not in enough pain, I'm probably not going to do it. So, you know, if, you know, that's, that was the answer for me, I was ready to do it when I was tired of being the way that I was being and, and tired of feeling the way that I was feeling and tired of doing the same old rat race over and over and over again. 
And so, you know, if, if, you know, for me today, it's like, if I'm, if I can tolerate the pain, I'm probably not going to do the work. And that's just the unfortunate truth. Um, and, you know, so I too did, you know, I, I, I inventoried the, the patterns and characteristics. I see the 10 minutes. Thank you, Richard. Um, I, I too inventory the patterns and characteristics. And, and honestly, I, I did them all. I did all the patterns and all of the characteristics. I did every single one because anytime that we were reading it in the meeting, of course, my dog's been quiet this entire time and now is wants to go and get barking. But, um, you know, um, anytime that we would read a section, you know, whether it was the denial, low self-esteem, whatever, there were, I could relate. And for me, that was the searching part of it because I manifest all of these in one area of my life or, or another. And in some of this stuff, you know, um, I, it was, it was, it was challenging to kind of look at this, you know, and, and, and I had to be careful to not invent things and to really go and do some searching and look at where these, these patterns and characteristics were manifesting my, themselves in my life. But every single one of them, I was able to find somewhere in my life where that cert, where that particular thing had manifested. And then also, um, I also did, I did both the, all three of the inventories in, in the, um, in the green book. So I did that. And then I also did the, the relationships and, you know, there in, in the green book, it says that one of the most loving things that we can do for ourselves is to do the fourth step. And I, I think there's a, that's that's kind of there's a, there's a lot of truth in that because if I if I think about it you know it's it's really my perfectionism that holds me back from doing this stuff I don't want to take a real honest look at myself and you know if I'm looking at my relationships with other people I always idolized other people I always put them on a pedestal and I wanted to do the same thing with myself and if I really want to truly love another person, I have to look at them honestly with all of their flaws and all of their, you know, their cuts, their scrapes, their, their pimples, their scars and love them with all of that stuff. And so if I was going to love myself, I was going to have to take a real honest look at myself and stop trying to look at myself through this lens of, you know, of, of being perfect. And, and I never really did, but I wanted to present that. So for me, one of the most profound things that's happened in my recovery is I've learned. So I used to think that in order for people to love me, I needed to present this very polished, perfect person, this image of myself that I needed you, if, in order for you to love me, I needed to be perfect. And what I've learned in recovery is that as the, you know, people are like epoxy, like they don't, they don't adhere to our smooth polished surfaces it's the cracks it's the fractures in our in our exterior that that we can connect to right so like for an example if i'm if everything is going great in my life according to me um and i call one of my friends in recovery and everything's going great in their life we really don't have anything to talk about what's going on man everything's good what's going on with you everything's good. But if one of us has a crisis going on, we can have an in-depth conversation and we can connect and we can get, you know, we can walk through that crisis together. And so I, I, I it was, it was really through this fourth step process that I learned how to, to identify those flaws in my character and, and those character defects so that I could talk to them, talk with you about them. And, you know, that's, and, and it, it, it's greatly improved my, my relationships um, in, in recovery and, and with the people that, I, that are in my life today. And then, you know, and then we, we don't talk about this part of it, but my sponsor was very um, adamant about me doing the, um, the attributes inventory. And I didn't really know how to do that 
Um, you know, in my, my other program, it was always about, you know, looking at, at my faults where I was wrong, um, where I had fallen short, looking at my part of it. And then, you know, this other, and then, so it was a little bit uncomfortable doing the attributes inventory, but I think for me as a codependent, like it was really important to do that. And, you know, one, uh, there was a helpful, see the five minutes. Thank you. Um, you know, there, so my, my, my sponsor in AA, who I've known for a very long time, he's probably one of the people that I'm closest to in the world. Now I, I spent holidays with him and his family and, you know, his kids call me uncle Jesse and like all of that stuff. And, and so I was working through the attributes and I said, you know what, I wonder how, what other people think some of my attributes are. Um, and so I called him and I, and I asked him, you know, what some of my attributes were. And he came up with a bunch of stuff that I never would have came up, come, came up with, but I could see it when he told me about it, I could see it. And I, you know, I told him that I'm doing this attributes inventory, you know, what do you, what do you like about me? You know? And then he told me, and then I said, you know what, that's actually not part of the inventory. I was just feeling a little bit bad about myself and I needed to pick me up. So I appreciate you saying all those nice things about me. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, that was a tool that I utilized was I asked other people and, it, you know, um, and it, but it gave me an opportunity and I, you know, um, to, to really take a look at, at, at some of my attributes and, and, you know, stop looking at this as like a self-deprecating thing. Um, and, you know, the, the reality of the matter is, is that like, you know, we, we have this term and or the saying in recovery and it's like, how free do you want to be? You know, I went to therapy for years and couldn't tell the truth. I, I would pay a therapist to lie to them. Like it, it, it just didn't make any sense. And, and it's only the stuff that I'm going to put on this paper that I'm going to get free of. And so for me, that's where it takes away some of the fear. The fear is still, still there. But if I can get it onto this paper, I can get free of it. If I don't get it on the paper, I'm not going to get free of it. And we're probably going to have to do it later on. And, you know, and, you know, I think that, you know, and what the, what the fourth step is, we talk about doing our fourth step, like it's this one thing, like it's this one time, this one and done. And, it, and it's not, this is something that I have to continue to do. Even if things are going well, I need to keep doing this. You know, I, I every single Saturday, whether I need it, it needs it or not, I, I vacuum my carpets, right? And whether the floors look absolutely completely clean or not, inevitably there's some shit in there. And that's what the inventory does. It shows me where, where all that shit's at. You know, even if things look like they're going fine, I don't need to wait for a crisis in order to do an inventory. This is something that I can do, you know, and this is, it's a tool that's to be used. And, um, and it, it, what it does for me is it gives me, it, it mirrors back to me the reality of where I'm at today. And I can't do anything until I can see the reality of where I'm at. And, um, and yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of grasping at straws to say something now. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you again, Jackie, for asking me and I will pass.